Here are the video solutions for AQA Functional Skills Maths Level 1. This is paper 2 which is the calculator paper and this is January 2022. So question number 1 we need to circle the smallest value. So what I would probably do is just write them all out in a column 0 0.084 this is going to make it a little bit easier to compare them 0 0.71, 0 0.069 and 0 0.53. In the units column everything is a 0 so we can't tell them apart However, in the tenths, we've got 0, 7, 0, 5. So if we're looking for the smallest value, which is the smallest out of 0, 7, 0, and 5? Well, it's 0. Um, so there are two with a 0, so that means we can get rid of the 0 0.71 and the 0 0.53. Comparing these two numbers, everything is equal in the um, units and the tenths. So let's compare the one hundredths. We've got an 8 and a 6, or 6 is less than 8. So this is going to be the smallest value. Question number two, four angles meet at a point, which angle is obtuse? So we need to remember that an obtuse angle is um, between a right angle and 180 degrees. So uh, any angle between this line and this line is obtuse. So C is obtuse, that is between uh, 90 and 180, so the answer is C. Question number three, we're converting litres to millilitres. We just need to remember that one litre is 1000 millilitres and um, if you don't remember that then you're going to struggle on the question so to convert litres to millilitres what are we doing we are multiplying by 1000 so our calculation is 3.2 times by 1000 so 3200 millilitres question number five a fair ordinary dice is rolled write down the probability of rolling the number three okay well on a fair ordinary dice there are um, six numbers there's only one three so the probability is one out of six. Question number five, the scale is one centimeter to eight kilometers, so 2.5 centimeters. So all we're doing um, is we are multiplying the centimeter value by eight, and that is the kilometer value. So all we need to do is 2.5 times by eight, and 2.5 times by eight is 20 kilometers. Question number six, so for this question, to, we need to work out the mean. So what we need to do is work out the total. So 10 plus 6 plus 4 plus 12 plus 5 plus 17, which equals 54. And now we're dividing this total by the number of values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 54 divided by 6, which is 9. So the mean is 9. Question number 7, decrease 1600 by 20%. So what I'm going to do is work out 10% of 1600. Well, 10% of 1,600 is 160. 10%, remember, you're dividing by 10 because 10% is 1 tenth. So if 10% is 160, then 20% of, uh, of 1,600 is going to be double that. So 2 times 160, which is 320. So if we are decrease, decreasing 1,600 by 20%, then we need to subtract 320 from 1,600. And we can use a calculator, of course, if we don't fancy doing this in our heads. And, and that will give us 1,280. Okay, on to question number eight about a holiday to Portugal. So what we need to do is uh, work out the total cost. So we've got flights, we've got villa rental, we just need to work out the car hire. So it's 130 pounds plus 35 pounds times the number of days hired, which is times by 14. Uh, we need to do the multiplication first and 35 times by 14 is 490 so it's 130 plus 490 and that comes to 620 for the car hire so the total cost is going to be 872 for the flights plus 1980 for the villa rental plus 620 for the car hire and that comes to a total of 3472 she has 3,500, so does she have enough to hire a car um, for 14 days? Uh, yes, she does, so we can just say yes. Part B, okay, so the first thing we need to work out is how much spending money does she need for the entire holiday? So 14 days, 200 pound, uh, euros per day. So 14 times by 200 euros is 2,800 euros. Now she's already got 192, so what uh, will she need to take, uh, what will she need to change this time? So it's just that if we subtract the 192 euros, then uh, we can see that she still needs 
2,608 euros. So will changing um, 2,200 pounds be enough? Well, we know that one pound is 1.16 euros. So 2,200 pounds is gonna be 1.16 multiplied by 2,200 and 1.16 times 2,200 is 2,552 euros, which is less than 2,608. So um, she is not correct. No, she is not correct because 2,552 is less than 2,608. Question number six. So we're just comparing the taxi cost of 145 versus driving. Now be careful, um, the airport is 98 miles from home but you have to go to the airport and then back from the airport. So it's going to be 19 miles doubled times 15 P and I'm going to put that in pounds. So 0 0.15 and 98 times two times 15 P is uh, 29 pounds and 40 P on top of that, there's going to be the parking. So if I add on the 85 for the parking and the fuel costs of 29 40, what do I get? I get uh, 100, and 14 pounds 40. We can see that this is much cheaper than the 145 um, in a taxi. So how much cheaper is it to drive than travel by taxi? Well, that's simply the difference between 145 and 11440. And 145 take away 11440 is 30 pounds and 60p. So there we go, 30 pounds 60, and we're done. Okay, moving on to number nine. So for this question, first of all, we just need to work out the missing uh, side lengths here. So the top side here, well, that is gonna be six plus 13. Just it, This is a horizontal, so have a look at the other horizontal sides for a clue. Six plus 13 is 19 kilometers. And don't forget, we've got this vertical side here. So look at the other vertical sides. We've got a six and a 16. No, we're not adding in the, uh, on this occasion. This side here is shorter than 16. In fact, it's gonna be 16 take away six, so this is 10 kilometers. So adding up the perimeter, I would choose a corner and work your way clockwise or anti-clockwise just to make sure you've added every value uh, and not uh, accidentally added one twice as well. So six plus six plus 10 plus 13 plus 16 plus 19, that is 70 kilometers. So we want to, we want to know how long it will take him to ride 70 kilometers if he's traveling at 20 kilometers per hour. So speed is the distance divided by time. And a very handy thing to remember is that when you've got say A equals B over C, you can swap these two parts around and C is B divided by A. So in this case, time is the distance divided by speed. Really handy little trick um, so that you can move manipulate formulae. So the distance is 70, so the time is going to be 70 divided by the speed, which is 20, and 70 divided by 20 is 3.5, and we've shown that it's gonna take 3.5 hours. So for this uh, question, all we need to do is add up all these times. Um, so what I would probably do is just add up the, time, the minutes first of all. So 40 plus uh, 40 plus 20 is 80, 100 minutes. And 100 minutes, uh, that is one hour and 40. So we need to add three hours 30. Remember 3.5 is not three hours, five minutes or three hours 50, that's three hours 30, plus one hour 40. So if we add up the hours, we get four hours. And if we add up the minutes, we get 70 minutes. So it's gonna take four hours and 70 minutes, which doesn't quite make sense because 70 minutes is longer than an hour. 70 minutes is one hour and 10 minutes. So four hours plus one hour, that is gonna be five hours and 10 minutes. And we need to be home by 4 p.m. So 4 p.m. minus five hours, that's gonna take me to 11 a.m. And 11 a.m. take away 10 minutes, or well, that will take me to 10.50 in the morning, 10.50 a.m. Okay, for part C, uh, James says the area of the land for sheep is more than five times the area of the deer park. Okay, so the deer park has an area of um, six times by six, which is 36 kilometers squared. 
and the, the sheet bit is 13 times by 16 and uh, 13 multiplied by 16 is uh, 208 and that's also square kilometers so is 208 more than 5 times 36 well what is 36 multiplied by 5 36 times by 5 is 180 so 208 is greater than 180 so is he correct yes he is correct Okay, on to question number 10. So in 10a, we are told that the machine makes 5,000 badges and two are faulty. So what that means is that two out of 5,000 are faulty. So the probability of a badge being faulty is two out of 5,000. However, this fraction could be simplified. We've got an even number top and bottom. So if I divide the top by two, I get one. And if I divide the bottom by two, I get 2,500. Now, it's fairly obvious, I would say, that 1 over 2,500 is not the same as what the manager said, which is 1 over 250. So is he correct? No, the manager is wrong. OK, on to part B. So we know that 25,000 are produced in the week. So how many have been made Monday, Tuesday and uh, Wednesday? So that's going to be 5,000 plus 5,000 plus 1400 which is 11,400 so how many do we still need to make on the Thursday and Friday well that's the total of 25,000 oops far too many zeros there 25,000 minus 11,400 which is 13,600 so on Thursday and Friday we need to make this number of um, badges but it's the same on Thursday and Friday that's what it says there so we simply just need to split that number in two and we get 6,800 so 6,800 on the Thursday, as well as 6,800 on the Friday. And if you want to, you can add up those um, five values and you should get uh, 25,000. On to part C. So first of all, let's work out the cost of making 5,000 badges. So it's going to be 5,000 times by 17 pence. And that comes to 85,000 pence. Let's turn that into pounds by dividing by 100 or chopping off two zeros. So that's 850 pounds. So that's for the materials. There's also the other costs as well. So that's going to be 850 plus the 265, and that comes to 1115. Now, if the company wants to make at least 40% profit, we need to work out 40% of this amount and add it on. So what is 40% of 1115? Well, the calculation is 0 0.4 times by 1115 and that comes to 446. Now, if you don't know what this number is all about, uh, 0 0.04, in fact, we could write it as 0 0.40 if we wanted to, to make it a bit more obvious. We call this the percentage multiplier. This is the percentage multiplier for 40%. So this is what we need to multiply the total by in order to work out 40% of it. It's the decimal equivalent of 40%. In other words, it's 40 divided by 100. And that zero doesn't need to be on the end there. So this is the profit the company wants to make, so therefore they need to sell it for one, sell the badges for 1115 plus the 446 profit. So they need to sell all of the badges for £1,561. Now that's 5,000 badges, so therefore the price per badge will be 1561 divided by 5,000, and that comes to 0.3122. So I'm going to multiply this number by 100 to turn it into pence. So that is 31.22 pence. Now, obviously, you can't sell a badge for 31.22p. You could sell it for 31p, or you could sell it for 32p. If you sold it for 31p, then you wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't be making their at least 40% profit. So therefore, they're going to have to increase it to 32 pence per badge. Okay, so 11A, Aisha's paid an hourly rate of £8.85, except on a Sunday when she earns double that. So how many hours has she done Monday, Thursday, and um, Saturday? So that's gonna be five plus four plus seven, which is 16 hours. So what we want to do is 16 multiplied by £8.85, and 16 times by £8.85 is 141 pounds 60p 
Now she wants to earn at least 230 pounds, so she's a little bit short. So uh, how much additional does she need to earn? Well, that's gonna be 230 take away 14160, and that is 88 pounds 40. Now we know that she earns double um, on a Sunday, so normally it's eight pounds 85, but on a Sunday it's gonna be double that, which is 17 pounds 70. So how many um, hours does she need to do? Well, how many 1770s go into 88 pounds 40? 88 pounds 40 divided by 17 pounds 70 comes to 4.994 hours. So the minimum number of hours she needs to work, well, I think that it's safe to say the minimum will be five hours. Let's just round it up a little bit. So the answer there, five hours. Okay, on to part B. So first of all, we need to work out what half of £72.90 is. So £72.90 divided by two, that is £36.45. A fifth of £72.90 is £72.90 divided by five. £72.90 divided by five, that is £14.58. So this is how much she spent. So the total she spent is 36.45 plus 14.58 which is 51 pounds and 3p. So if she saved the rest, then that's gonna be the difference between the 72.90 and the 51 pounds and 3p. And that comes to 21 pounds and 87. Okay, so for part C, um, so we're going to do a suitable diagram to show this information. So I am going to do a bar chart. Now I'm going to do number of nights along the bottom. And up the side was number of guests. So number of guests. Now, the number of guests goes up to 11, so I think I'll just go up in one. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, And the number of nights was uh, two, three, and four. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a bar chart. So I'll just do two nights, three nights, four nights. Um, I'm gonna do so my first bar, so let's have a look at two nights. Two nights goes up to 11. I might just put the chart going up a bit, bit just a bit beyond it. So we're going up to 11. So I am going to, ideally you would be using a ruler here. I'm just freestyling this on my graphics tablet. There we go. So there is my uh, bar for uh, two nights. For three nights is up to six. and four nights was just three. There we go, a couple of things just to note, all the bars are the same width, uh, they're just different heights because, well, as expected, because the number of guests is different and there's a gap between all the bars as well and they have consistent width as well. So there we have it and that is the end of the paper.